So Omar, my, my work would be coaching, um, originally it was what, what we would now regard as first class cricket. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then the system in South Africa changed and they, and they amalgamated first class teams to make franchises. So I didn't work, I suppose indirectly I worked for Cricket South Africa, but I would work for the first class setup. Right. Um, so I started with Mark uh, when I first came out to South Africa and he was a pupil at the school where I first started coaching. So that would have mm. been in 1991. So he, was, he would have been about 14. I think he was in the under 15s at that stage. He was an off-spin bowler. Um, <laughs> and and he's just an incredible athlete. He's a, a brilliant squash player. And in his age group in South Africa, he was the number one squash player. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, he, was a, and he was a more than useful batter in his, in his team at school. And... And I just thought his, uh, uh, his potential is that this kid is such a natural, natural athlete. He's got such good hand-eye coordination. Um, with a little bit of work, he'd make a really good keeper. Mm. And so he, um, I put it to him, and he decided to have a go at it. And he became the first team keeper. And, and, he, and with a group of other players, because we had a very fine college first eleven. Um, by the time he got into the first team and with a group of other players, uh, they worked exceptionally hard on their game. And he went on to become the provincial under-19 captain. So he was the yeah. college captain, the under-19 captain. But his development was quite late in terms of the school system because all the big schools in South Africa would play against each other. So he was never a brand-name cricket player. And, and so he really only burst into the, into the, onto the school circuit in terms of recognition in his last year. And we went up to the interprovincial championship where all the provinces would play against each other. He, cap- he captained the side and we were the only unbeaten side at the week. And you can't mm. really win the week, but if you could win the week, we won the week because we were, you know, we were the only unbeaten side there. And, uh, and four of those lads went on to get selected for the South African under-19 side. And Mark was a really good captain, very, very good strategically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the guys would play for him. They enjoyed playing for him. And, and so Makai was part of that side. Uh, Justin Kemp was part of that team. And there was another lad called Talani Nkweini. And unfortunately, Talani didn't come through. He was a really exciting left-arm spinner. But, but Mark, Makai, and Justin all came through. And it's great they played international cricket. Uh, and I know that all who were part of their development, particularly from a border point of view, were, were very proud. Um, and... And so what goes into it? At what, point, at what point does a player decide that they want to play? You know, is that we would all have dreams as kids. Of course. And I think if, you, if you're playing a first-team cricket at your school, whether you be a boy or a girl, um, and for many of your viewers, perhaps they don't play cricket. Perhaps they're playing another sport. Yep. Maybe they play a sport where it's just them, like in tennis, you know, where they have to compete against an opponent rather than as part of a team. But, it, but Omar, it, it just begins with an idea. Mm. It begins with an idea. And what I would do, what I did with the, with the guys, those young players at the college, is we sat down and we did a goal-setting exercise. And mm-hmm. I would um, speak to the lads and I would, get them to, um, I would get them to map out what they want to achieve. So firstly, choose your goal. Mm-hmm. And then... And then uh, let's start breaking that down into steps. And, and we would have a dream goal. Right. I'd say to them, what's your ultimate? Let's write it down on paper. Let's verbalize that. Yeah. And of course, you know, they're young lads and, and, and perhaps they don't want to stay, state it out in public. Maybe they want to keep it as a private goal, but to yep. have set it as a goal for themselves. And I think that, that and look, I mean, your series is, is, is in helping people to understand how to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that is, is not about sport. That is about, that is about making a choice and a decision mm-hmm. about how you would like your future to be. And, and it doesn't matter whether you come from a background where you have been disadvantaged. It doesn't matter if you come from a background where you would have been privileged. It is really just about using your imagination and and thinking what are the things that you love and, mm-hmm. and what are the things that you would like to pursue perhaps for some for some young people if they've been brought into 
born into circumstances where they've been economically disadvantaged. Maybe one of their first goals would be that when I get older, I don't ever want to be in that position again. So I want to ensure that, that myself and the family have, that we don't have to experience poverty. So that would be mm -hmm. a very strong motivator. Now, if you can join that as a motivation and you can, and, and you can uh, mix that with what you're passionate about, uh, so the two can blend together as a goal, yep. um, you know, that's really powerful. And, and so there's a clear process to that. There's a very, mm. very clear process to that. And it's got nothing to do with sport. It's got everything right. to do with how we Absolutely. learn to think. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more, right? Goal setting is such an important part of your journey towards success. Um, working with the voucher or Antini, did you, did you feel there was something different about these boys at that young age when they were uh, setting their goals or going about their goals? Um, that really set them apart? Well, you know, I have to, I have to contextualize myself in the journey with the, with the boys. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a young coach. Yeah. I'm at the beginning of my journey. That's it's, true. It's the, it's the early years of my coaching. And I would not have a, a lens where I would have seen generationally players come through. So I'm walking this journey with them as they're proceeding in their cricket journey. I'm proceeding in my coaching journey. That's so and true. So I wouldn't be able to, at that stage, I didn't have a lens where I could look at players and say, well, you know, I think you could go on and be a, an international player. I think you could go on and be a great, et cetera. What I would say though, which I think is really important because there was a, a fast bowler who was the year before Makaya. And this guy in his age group would be the quickest young bowler in South Africa. Mm. And he was absolutely incredible. And now nobody has heard of him since because he didn't choose where he wanted to get to. Mm. And he didn't make that choice. He didn't make that decision. And, and even if it had been a fleeting moment where he decided, okay, well, I'd like to play for South Africa is he didn't hold his focus. You know, he got distracted. So anything that we want to achieve in life is, number one is we've got to work for it. And so we need, a, we need as clear a vision in our yeah. mind's eye as possible of what that looks like. And again, you know, as a young, as a young person, is your goal is, you know, is it's not easy to conceptualize, even though you might have mm. an idea of what you'd like yeah. to achieve you will have questions around it. So what we do is we incubate that idea. So we, we can call it our dream goal. We can say yep. that's our ultimate goal, but of course it may be five, 10 years in the future. So, so we choose it and we incubate it. Mm -hmm. and, and then we come back into the present and say, okay, well, if that's down the line, let's, let's look at a shorter term goal. Like maybe what do I want to achieve this season? Mm -hmm. What do I want to achieve this academic year? And then just break that down into stages and then just bring yeah. that all the way back. If a student's are preparing for an exam or they're preparing for a championship or a competition is we just, we look at that, at the, at the goal for that period of time. And then we come back to the present moment. So as far as possible, we just break it down into steps. So we mm. reverse engineer it. Right. And then we, and then we become present again and then we work out, okay, well, what are the actions I've got to take now? I can't control what's happening next week or the week after or the week after. So we come back, we're very present and we're looking and say, right, what is the action steps I am taking today, which will take me to tomorrow, which will then lead on to taking me into right. next week. We've got to be, so we picture, we imagine, we make it multi-sensory yeah. and then we come back into the present moment and we look after today. Perhaps these champion players were really, really good at was having that clear cut goal, but at the same time, also being uh, also excelling in understanding what's really important for them to do today and to create that roadmap and work towards it step by step. But 